All right, guys, in this example, we have helium gas flowing through a well-insulated nozzle at steady state. We have the temperature and velocity at the inlet, and at the exit, we have the temperature and the pressure. So we're told the area as well of the exit, and we have an ideal gas model here. We have the K value, and we have to find the mass flow rate of the nozzle. So here's our schematic, and because I have the velocity on the left side, and I have the area on the right side, I'm thinking I can use the energy balance equation to find the velocity on the right side, and then we can use the equation mass flow rate m dot equals the area times the velocity divided by the specific volume. So I'm thinking we can probably do that at the exit because we have the area, and that's where we'll find our mass flow rate. So just remember that the nozzle only has one inlet and one exit, so that means that m dot one equals m dot two, which is just going to be m dot. Um, and then we're going to be finding this stuff at the exit because we have the area at the exit. So let's go ahead and fill in some subscripts here. So we'll have A2, V2, and I guess V2 as well. So first things first, I guess let's find the specific volume at um, exit 2. Now remember the ideal gas law of PV equals MRT. You can actually just rewrite that by dividing both sides by the mass flow rate, and you'll actually have that P2, specific volume 2, equals RT2. So that's the formula we're going to be using to find the specific volume. Just some simple rearrangement here. We'll have the V2 equals RT2 over P2. So first we need to find that um, gas constant. So the gas constant R equals the universal gas constant divided by the molar mass of this specific gas, which is helium. So the universal gas constant is just, in English units, 1545 pound force feet per pound mole, pound mass, or pound mole, I guess, degrees Rankine. Now we just divide all this by the molar mass of helium, which is just 4 pound mass per pound mole. So if you do some cancellation here, the pound mole and pound mole cancel out. And then you're going to be left with 1545 divided by 4 is 386.25. And the unit here is going to be pound feet, or sorry, pound force times feet per degree Rankine divided by pound mass. So now we can cancel out our units here a little bit further. So just remember that a pound force is going to be equal to mass times acceleration, which is a pound mass times feet per second squared. And again, we're multiplying the pound force by feet and dividing all of that by degrees Rankine. And now we're dividing all of that by pound mass. So now we cancel out our pound mass and pound mass and our feet squared or our feet multiplying give us feet squared. And we have feet squared per second squared degrees Rankine. So I'm going to go ahead and replace our units here. So we have 386.25 feet squared per second squared degrees Rankine. So now we can plug in what we have into our formula here. So I'm going to go ahead and do it underneath here. So we have the specific volume at 2 equals the gas constant of 386.25. And that would be feet squared per second squared degrees Rankine. Times the temperature, so we have 400 already in degrees Rankine, thankfully. Multiply it by that, and divide all of that by the pressure. So the pressure is 40 pounds per square inch. So we have 40 pound force per square inch. Sorry about that. Should be inches squared. But notice up top you have feet squared, so you want to turn that inches squared into feet squared. So by doing to do that, all you have to do is multiply by uh, 144. So if you have inches up top, so inches squared, and you want to put it into feet squared, you have 144 square inches per square foot. Now I'm just going to eliminate the units that I can. So the degrees ranking up top actually cancels out, and then the inches squared on the bottom also cancel out. So numerically, what this uh, solves out to is you'll, your specific volume would be 26.822, but we still need a unit here. So let's write out what we have here. So we have feet squared per second squared up top, and all that is divided by pound force, which actually I'm going to rewrite the pound force. Remember, it's mass times acceleration, so you have pound mass 
times feet per second squared and we'll multiply that by one over feet squared since it's technically being divided by that. So let's see what we can cancel out here. So the second squared, second squared, those cancel out. And then the feet here will cancel out this exponent. And then because this over here, this foot is in the um, denominator of a denominator, we can multiply that up top and you're going to have cubic feet per pound mass. So our specific volume here is 26.822 and that was cubic feet per pound mass, which is the correct unit for specific volume. So now for our mass flow rate equation, we have the specific volume and we have the area. So now we just need to find the velocity. So in our energy balance equation, we have zero equals the heat transfer minus the power plus the mass flow rate times the change in enthalpy plus the change in velocity over two, which is the kinetic energy, plus the gravity times the change in elevation, aka the potential energy. Now we're told to neglect the potential energy, so we can go ahead and cross this right out. We're told that the nozzle is well insulated, so we can go ahead and cross out the heat transfer. And finally, it's a nozzle, it's not a compressor, and it's not a turbine, so it's not a power generation or power consumption device, so therefore we have no power. So now, once again, remember that we're looking for the velocity at the exit V2. Um, we have the temperature on either side, so we should be able to find the enthalpy using the specific heats. Um, but we, we do have a mass flow rate here, so we have to figure out how we're going to get rid of it. So technically, in this, in this case here, you could divide both sides by the mass flow rate. But I guess that what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute it and bring the enthalpy to the other side. So let's go ahead and do that. So you'll have m dot times h2 minus h1 equals, I guess, m dot, I almost forgot, m dot times v1 squared minus v2 squared divided by 2. And now you can divide both sides by m dot. It's just easier to, to visualize it if you do it this way. And um, now we can replace the enthalpies with, remember that the enthalpies are also equal to the specific heat times T2 minus T1. And once again, all this equals V1 squared minus V2 squared divided by 2. So now I'm just going to rearrange for V2, the velocity at the exit. And if you do, you'll have that V2 equals the square root of 2 times Cp, the specific heat, times T1 minus T2, which again would be the specific enthalpies, plus, let me close the bracket, plus the initial velocity, V1 squared. So now once we find this V2, we can plug it back into this initial equation here, and then we can find our mass flow rate. So now we introduce the specific heat. So we have helium here as our gas. So remember that to find the specific heat of any gas, you can just use the equation of Cp specific heat equals the specific heat ratio times the gas constant divided by the ratio minus one. So I want the unit for my specific heat to be in BTU per pound mass degrees Rankine. So I'm gonna have to do some manipulation to the units on the gas constant. So here we have our gas constant. We have 386.25 feet squared per second squared degrees Rankine. Recall that earlier I said that, or I derived this unit from a foot pound, foot pound force per degree Rankine times pound mass. So essentially our gas constant is 386.25 pound feet or foot pounds per degree Rankine pound mass. And we're looking to get BTU per pound mass degree rank. And so we're already halfway there in the denominator. We should change the numerator out into BTU. So to get, to get from foot pounds to BTU, we can use a conversion factor of 1 BTU equals 778.17 pound feet or pound force times feet. So now if we take our gas constant of 386.25, and it's pound force times feet divided by pound mass degree Rankine. If we convert that into BTU by dividing by 778.17, we have 0 0.496 BTU per pound mass degree Rankine. So you might not need to know all these derivations, but I'd, I'd just like to include where they came from. So now let's get back to our specific heat here. So now we can plug in what we have. So we'll have that CP, the specific heat, equals the heat ratio of 1.67 
divided by 1.67 minus 1 and the specific i mean the uh, gas constant was 0 0.496 multiply them together and now our answer is going to mean btu per pound mass degree ranking which is what we're looking for and i calculated out that the specific heat equals 1.236 and again that's in btu per pound mass degree ranking so now let's plug in what we have so we have our velocity 2 v2 equals the square root of 2 times the specific heat which we had is 1.236 times t1 minus t2 so we have a t1 of 550 rankin minus t2 which was 400 rankin plus our initial velocity so plus v1 and v1 was 150 feet per second and we would square that so before you plug all this stuff in your calculator here and think you have your velocity, just make sure you always check your unit analysis here. So for example, let's look at our specific heat here. So we have 1.236 and that's BTU per pound mass degree Rankine. So that's our first unit. And we're multiplying that by degrees Rankine, a difference of temperature, T2 or T1 minus T2. And we're going to add to that our feet per second and it would actually be square on both sides since we're squaring the velocity. So you have to add feet per second squared, or feet squared per second squared, with feet squared per second squared. So we can cancel out our degrees rank in here, obviously. But on the left here, you have a BTU per pound mass, and on the right side, you have a feet squared per second squared. So how can you add these two things up? Essentially, we have to break down the left side until we can get it into feet squared per second squared, and it is possible. So what you have to do is first let's break down the BTU. So remember that 1 BTU equals 778.17 pound feet, pound force times feet, I should say. And we're dividing that by pound mass. And you're trying to add feet squared per second squared. So clearly you have to break something else down on the left side. So I see a pound force, let's cancel that out into being pound mass or pound or mass times acceleration. So recall that a pound force equals 32.2 pound mass times feet per second squared. That's just mass times acceleration. So we'll have 778.17 times 32.2. And now we have pound mass times feet per second squared and we're multiplying that by feet because again it's work and we're dividing all of that by pound mass sorry for the uh compressed text here so now we cancel out pound mass and pound mass and you have a feet times foot or sorry foot times foot and you have a feet squared per second squared now on the left side except now you have this conversion factor that you have to add into the equation so I just went ahead and rewrote that entire expression, except now adding the conversion factor. So you multiply the specific heat by 778.17 and 32.2, and the, rem the rest remains the same. Except now what you're doing is you're actually going to be adding square feet per square second plus square feet per square second. So now if you plug this into your calculator, now you can do that. You'll have that V2, velocity 2, equals 3,000. 51.83 and that's just going to be in feet per second so just be really careful with that conversion factor right there that can really throw you off so now we can finally plug in our velocity into our mass flow rate equation so we'll have that the mass flow rate i'm doing it up here in the top right corner we'll have the m dot equals the area which was 0 0.0085 square feet times the uh, velocity at the exit which was 3051 0.83 so right now in the top you currently have cubic feet per second and we're going to divide all of that by the specific volume which was calculated to be 26.822 and that was cubic feet per pound mass and if you basically plug all this into your calculator you'll have that the mass flow rate equals 0.967 and the unit would be pound mass per second.